sitemap.xml is a special file in XML format which is created for search engines. The target is not normal users, it is search engines and it contains list of all the pages that should be indexed and it may also show what is the relationship between those pages. So for example, these are the product pages, these are the blogs and so on. Now this can be very useful if you want to scrape certain information from a website. You don't have to go through all the pagination to actually get the product pages. Go and look at sitemap.xml, find the specific links directly to the product page and then only take care of parsing that page. But remember that sitemap is optional and not every site will have sitemap. So let's have a look at certain practical examples. So this is the sitemap for wix.com and remember that sitemap will always have this URL website name slash sitemap.xml and this is the standard structure. So it will have a URL set, inside that it will have a URL, inside that it will have a lock or location. So these all are individual pages. Now it may contain some additional information for the search engine but we are going to ignore that. You may see sitemap like this which is even more stylized. So it contains a link to another sitemap that can contain all this information about specific pages. Let's look at one more example. So this is another sitemap which contains link to other sitemap. And if you look at this one, so if we go and open that, so there is a sitemap inside a sitemap inside a sitemap. So let's start with this website which is relatively simple. So we'll open this sitemap.xml and let's see how we can parse specific pages. So I've already created a basic spider. So we are going to make changes to it so that it becomes a sitemap spider. So the first change is that instead of scrapy.spider, the base class is scrapy.spiders. Any guess? Sitemap spider, right? So this is the base class. It should derive from here. This is the first change. I don't need allow domain, so I'm going to remove it from here. Secondly, there is no start URL. So instead of start URL, what will we have? Sitemap URL, right? So I'm going to paste this sitemap URL, right? And in the parse method, I'm going to do a simple yield for page title. So response.css and every page will have a title. So let's extract the text. So let's run this and see the results. There is a lot of text here. So as you can see that it has scraped 106 item and what kind of items it has scraped. So this one is a keyboard. So this is the product page. This one is also a product page. Let's scroll a little bit up. Now this one doesn't look like a product page. So as you can see, let's open and look at this. So as you can see that this page is not a product page. So what we want to do is we want to narrow down so that only products are captured, right? We don't want to process all the pages. So this is where this individual sitemap product one XML, this is going to be useful. So what we will do is instead of sitemap.xml, we can start our scraping from here, right? So this is the only change that we need to make. Let's run the spider. And this time, as you can see that earlier there were 106 pages. And this time there are only 54 pages because it is limiting itself to all the links listed inside this page. But what if you are working with a site like this where you have a sitemap. Now inside this sitemap, there is sitemap products 1.xml, 2.xml, 3.xml, a long list, right? So in this case, you cannot paste everything. But at the same time, you don't want to parse anything other than products. So what is the solution? The solution is to start from sitemap.xml but have one more attribute. So this one is sitemap follow. So in this attribute, this is again going to be a list but in this list, you can write your criteria. So for example, we are working with this site and I just want the products. So if the URL is containing products, only then I want to follow this a sitemap. So this is my rule, right? So we'll start from this but the remaining sitemap should have this in the URL only then it will follow. So let's run this and verify we should still have only 54. So there we go we have only 54. So in this case for example if I don't want to scrape this but if you are scraping this so what you can do is if you write products then it will only follow the sitemaps 
which contain a product in the URL. Now, what if you want to differentiate the processing? So for example, let's say, let's create this example that I want to get products from this page and I also want to get blogs from this site, right? So I want to process two different set of pages. So of course, my scraping logic is going to be different for these pages. So in that case, uh, we can make use of one more attribute and this one is sitemap rules. So this is again going to be a list, but this time it is going to contain a tuple. The first one is going to be the URL pattern. So this is my URL pattern, okay? Now the second one is going to be the parse method. So let's say that I want to parse the product using this parse product and let's put a comma here and I want to have let's add the blogs and I want to create one more parse method but this time it will parse only the blog now just to save time I've pasted in some code that I wrote earlier so if it goes to the product page it will get the product title and the price but if it goes to the blog it will get only the blog title so we are starting from sitemap.xml but we are following other sitemaps which contain either products or contain blogs in the URL. If it is following a sitemap which contains blogs, in that case, all the results, individual pages will be parsed by parsed blog. So let's run this and this time, let's send the results to a JSON file. So here is the JSON file and as you can see that this is the entry for the blog. So this one has only this blog title which is the only thing we exported. And in case of product, and there is product and there is product price. And in case you're wondering how I created this selector, I will recommend that you go and look for CSS selector this video. I'll leave the link in the description. And in this video, you will understand how to create all these complex selectors. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.